The U.S. is developing a new atomic bomb. Should Russia and China be afraid? The nuclear issue is once again coming to the forefront of world politics. Moreover, its most brutal manifestations, Israeli Heritage Minister Amahai Eliyahu admits the use of nuclear weapons in the Gaza Strip. Russian President Vladimir Putin signed a law to withdraw ratification of the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty. As a response, the U.S. has already counted the number of casualties of a hypothetical nuclear strike that would be launched against Moscow and St. Petersburg if necessary. On October 27, the Pentagon unveiled plans to develop a new nuclear gravity bomb that would be 24 times more powerful than the nuclear bomb detonated in Hiroshima. In this video, we'll tell you what the new American nuclear bomb will be and why the Pentagon has made such a decision. And now, more about all this. In 2017, against the backdrop of development work on the B-61 Mod-12 aerial bomb, the U.S. National Nuclear Security Administration NNSA, revealed overall plans for the further development of tactical and strategic nuclear weapons for the Air Force. In the next two decades, it was planned to maintain the existing arsenal with some changes as necessary. In 2037, the development of a new modification of the B-61 bomb was to be launched, in 2050, the B-61 Mod 13 was to enter service. Such plans remain valid until now, but on October 27, the Pentagon officially announced the adoption of a new plan. It's reported that in recent months, specialists of the military department and NNSA have been studying the current situation and scenarios of its possible development, as well as looking for ways to further develop nuclear weapons. In response to the changing political and military situation and the emergence of new threats, it was decided to accelerate the development of nuclear weapons. The development of the next bomb of the B-61 family is not going to be postponed until the end of the next decade. The Mod 13 project will be launched very shortly. Below, we'll certainly try to understand what the Pentagon officials mean by the changing military and political situation and the emergence of new threats. But first, we'll tell you what the new nuclear bomb of gravity type will probably be. By the way, the term gravity type just means that this weapon will be dropped from an airplane, like the infamous bombs Little Boy and Fat Man dropped respectively on August 6th and 9th, 1945, on the Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. All details of the technical specifications for the prospective aerial bomb are unknown. Nevertheless, a recent official publication reveals the main ideas of the new project, and allows us to make assumptions or conclusions. Immediately say that nothing radically new in this bomb will not be. The principal design of thermonuclear charges has not changed since March 1, 1954 at Bikini Atoll when the United States tested a 15 megaton bomb, Bravo, on lithium deuteride. And on November 22, 1955, over semi paladins test site in the USSR, burst the first Soviet two-stage thermonuclear bomb, RDS-37, with a capacity of 1.7 megatons, demolishing almost half of the test site. In general, speaking of the B-6113, we're talking about the use of already proven development methods, solutions, and components, as in the case of several previous modifications of the B-61 product. The new B-61 bomb will actually be developed based on the existing and in-service B-61 Mod 7 munition. Production of the advanced design will be established from the existing arsenal of older products. The Mod 7 bombs will be repaired, rebuilt, and refurbished based on the modern Mod 13 design. It should be noted that the B-61-7 was also created in the same way. At the turn of the 80s and 90s, these items were rebuilt from the available B-61 Mod 1. At the same time, unlike other bombs of the family, it's positioned as a strategic weapon. Pentagon reports allow us not to expect any radical changes to the original design. In all likelihood, the new version of the bomb will retain an elongated body of streamlined shape with tail fins and rudders. Externally and in size, the B-6113 will not differ from the recently adopted B-6112. The length of the latter reaches 3.6 meters, diameter of 330 millimeters, the mass is not less than 300 to 400 kilograms. It should be expected that the B-6113 will use the B-6117 payload without modifications or with minimal changes. According to known data, Mod 1 and Mod 2 modifications used a common thermonuclear charge with adjustable power. 
There are four units with output from 10 kilotons to 340 kilotons. It's likely to retain the fuse with contact and high altitude detonation modes. At the same time, modern controls, protection, etc. borrowed from the Mod 12 product will be installed. One of the main objectives of the project is to improve target accuracy. The relevant capabilities will be transferred from the existing B-6112 project. According to known data, the latter is equipped with satellite and inertial navigation aids as well as rudders. With the help of these means, the bomb can correct the trajectory of its fall, reducing the possible miss. The B-617 is a strategic munition and is currently only part of the B-2A long-range bomber. The new bomb, in light of the expected timing of its appearance and introduction, will also be able to be used by the next-generation B-21 bombers, which we described in one of our videos. No further expansion of the range of carriers is envisioned. Now about why the Pentagon has so abruptly revised its plans for nuclear weapons development and is going to launch a new project as soon as possible. In general, it's not difficult to understand. First of all, it's about the overall modernization of nuclear arsenals as part of larger programs and plans. The state of U.S. strategic and tactical nuclear forces has long been a topic for criticism, and virtually any promising project is of particular value in this context. The U.S. has not modernized its nuclear forces for a long time, unlike Russia and China. This situation is unacceptable. After all, it directly affects the strategic security of the country. Also, the B-61 Mod 13 project will allow the Pentagon to save money. It offers the redesign of one of the existing B-61 bombs with the replacement of part of the devices and obtaining new capabilities. This approach has been repeatedly used in the development of new B-61 family designs, for example, in the latest Mod 12 project. Now it'll be applied in the B-61-13 project. In all this, the changes to the original design will be limited, allowing all the results to be obtained without a significant increase in cost. The Pentagon plans to do more than just update arsenals and save money. The proposed look of the B-6113 product shows that one of the main goals of the project is to improve the combat performance of the aerial bomb. This will be done at the expense of the standard control system, which will be the main difference between the prospective Mod 13 and the basic B-6117. The circular probable deviation of no more than meters or tens of meters will allow more full use of the potential of the warhead at 10 dashes, 340 kilotons. Thus, the Pentagon wants to launch the development of another thermonuclear munition for strategic aviation and is now waiting for congressional authorization. With the new B-61 Mod 13 guided thermonuclear bomb, the military department is going to solve several issues of different kinds and gain new capabilities. At the same time, it expects some savings and other benefits. However, all these are still just plans which require time and money to realize. Work on the B-6113 may be completed in the next few years, and by the end of the decade, this bomb will solve all the tasks of re-equipment and modernization of arsenals. At the same time, it should be taken into account that the ability to fulfill all the plans in a reasonable time and without excessive expenditures is still questionable. In addition, it's unknown how the situation in the world will change and whether the B-61 Mod 13 will meet the requirements of the customer and the anticipated tasks at the time of its arrival in the units. However, many U.S. military officials and experts believe that the creation of the B-61 Mod 13 bomb is certainly a step in the right direction. But it's only a modest step. House of Representatives member Mike Rogers bluntly stated, while we applaud the move to create a variant of the B-61 that will allow the Air Force to better reach, defend it, and deep underground targets, it's only a modest step in the right direction. A joint statement from the Armed Services Committee and ranking member Senator Roger F. Wicker said B-6113 is not a long-term solution, but it will give our commanders, especially in Indo-PACOM and UCOM, greater flexibility concerning these target sets. As the Strategic Policy Commission recently noted, China and Russia are engaged in a full-scale arms race while the U.S. is operating in place. Addressing this threat requires a dramatic transformation of our deterrence policy, not incremental or partial changes. Indo-PACOM is the Indo-Pacific Command, with the U.S. Armed Forces responsible for planning operations and directing U.S. forces in the event of military action in the Indo-Pacific region. And UCOM is appropriately the European command of the U.S. Armed Forces. 
In other words, many U.S. military, politicians, and experts believe that, at the moment, the U.S. is dangerously behind China and Russia in the field of nuclear weapons, so in the key component that ensures the strategic security of the country, and the B-6113 bomb does not eliminate this lag. Therefore, the enthusiastic reaction of many people to the news that Newsweek, using the NukeMap service, has modeled a nuclear strike with the help of the American B-6113 bomb with a capacity of 360 kilotons on Russian territory is not quite understandable. If the strike were to hit Moscow, which has 12.6 million inhabitants, about 311, 480,000 Muscovites could be killed and about 868,860 people injured. The deleterious efforts are also related to radioactivity, which would have significantly affected everyone within a 3-kilometer radius. Survivors would have faced an extremely high risk of cancer. If the bomb had dropped on St. Petersburg, the death toll would have been even higher. 360,150 people would have died, and 685,930 people would have been injured. No, we understand these people's feelings perfectly well. Many people do not like Putin's aggression against Ukraine, and it's quite natural to want to somehow take revenge on the aggressor. But it should be realized that Russia is the country with the largest number of nuclear warheads, and a nuclear attack on it will immediately trigger a crushing nuclear response. The same Sarma intercontinental missile which the Russians have started to put in launch silos instead of their famous Satan carries 10 warheads of 750 kilotons each, so more than twice as powerful as the B-61 bomb. One such missile is capable of destroying France, so there's no excitement. But the U.S. must modernize its nuclear weapons. Unfortunately, the world is so organized that only parity in nuclear weapons can keep our world from World War III. Today, the truth is this. Thermonuclear warhead arsenals provide a delicate strategic balance that makes it impossible for anyone to freely iron out the rest of the world with atomic weapons. Fear of a thermonuclear response is more than enough of a deterrent. What do you think about the ongoing nuclear arms race? Is there a chance for people to negotiate among themselves and avoid a nuclear apocalypse? Write about it in your comments. This concludes our story about the new American bomb. If you liked the video, give it a like as a reward for our labor. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel by clicking on the bell so that you don't miss other interesting videos of modern weapons, which are regularly released by us.